Welcome to the split activation demo. This is the second video in the VM activation series. If you haven't seen the bottom-up activation demo, please see that first and then come back to this one. You can find the link in the description. We have seen in the previous demo that there are two VM activation modes used by the Nuage Networks VSP. Bottom-up activation based on the metadata mainly used by users and split activation mode which requires some interaction with an API and is mostly used by the orchestration engines. This video will focus on the split activation approach. Let's first see what is the workflow in the split activation case. First, a user or an orchestration engine will create the VM in the vCenter. Next, it will create the vPort, VM interface and VM object using the VSD API. The VM UID and MAC address created in VSD need to be the same as those of the actual VM. This will enable the VSD to create the relationship between the created VM in vCenter and the VM object in VSD. Once the VM is created in vCenter, the vCenter will place the VM. This means that the vCenter will pick an ESXi host from its clusters and will spin up the VM on that host. It will also connect the VM to the right uh, port in the DB switch. Once the VM is on the ESXi host, the ESXi host will inform the VRS uh, that there is a new VM and will communicate the details. The VRS will change uh, the VLAN settings of the DB switch port for that VM and will inform the VSC that there is a new VM and will transmit the VM UID and MAX. So, uh, as opposed to the previous case where uh, the activation method was bottom up, we don't have metadata here, so the only information that will be transmitted from the uh, VRS to the VSC uh, is some, well, the name of the virtual machines and some information like the UID and the MAC address. Next, uh, the VSC will uh, send these elements to the VSD. The VSD will compare them to the ones that we created in the step 2 using the REST API and if they are the same, the VSD will assign the corresponding IP address to the VM. Now let's move into the demo. Let's, take, uh, let's start by taking a look at our uh, platform. So we have the vSphere environment which is uh, uh, which has two ESXi hosts and is connected to the Nuage platform. Uh, we have the virtualized services architect um, which uh, has a lab enterprise with a layer 3 domain, a zone 0 and subnet 0 connected to it. Uh, we can see that there are no VMs deployed. Next we have the vCenter integration node that has generic split activation selected, meaning that we will be using the split activation method for this demo. And in this sphere we have an Alpine virtual machine that, will, that we will connect to the subnet in the VSD. Uh, so first, uh, in order to do this, we need to make uh, several API calls to create the needed elements in the VSD. First, we will authenticate against VSD to be able to make requests. Next, we will get the VMs list. So we can see that the request is uh, returned OK. And, uh, the body is empty, meaning that there are no VMs in the VSD. Next, we create a vPort. So for this, we will need the uh, ID of the subnet to which we connect to that vPort.
then we specify the name of the viewport and we post next we will create the VM and the VM interface for this we will need to specify several parameters like the VM name the interface name the vport ID this is from the previous request the MAC of the virtual machine and the VM UID we will just need to format this properly and post the request we can see that the virtual machine and the VM interface have been created we can check this here so the virtual in the VM interface is in status initializing because the VM hasn't been started yet so as soon as we start the virtual machine the VRS will communicate to the VSC uh, the elements uh, of the VM the VSC will communicate that to the VSD and VSD will match the details of the VM with the details that, uh, of the VM object that has been created previously and if these correspond it will uh, uh, mark the VM as running so uh, the VM has been affected the, the VM has been assigned the 1083421678 AP we can check that by going by opening uh, a console to the virtual machine we find the IP address and we can even try to ping the default gateway Thing works. This concludes our demo. If you haven't done so already, please check out the first video in the series which focuses on the bottom-up activation linked below.